This is WZRD Radio 88.3 FM, The Wizard, where we are free form. And in this special show, poet, Chicago poet and publisher Janet Kuypers, who is now a resident of Austin, Texas, is here to share poetry from her recently released book, the second of two volumes and of a two volume set of her poetry written for holidays and events during the calendar year. From the New Scars Publications book, titled Every Event of the Year, Volume 2, July to December, Janet Kuypers will share select poems with you from summer events and holidays from this one-of-a-kind poetry book. Hello, everyone. I am honored to be here to share poetry with you guys from this new book release from Scars Publications, Every Event of the Year, Volume 2, January, July through December. Volume 1, January through June is already out. They're both available through Amazon. But I thought I would look for some more poems from you guys in this collection. The first poem, which I think is absolutely perfect, is for August 9th, which happens to actually be Book Lovers Day. Book Lover's Day. So I've got a poem in this book for you called Just One Book. I wore my older sister's communion veil, played dress up in my imaginary wedding. I read my older sister's prayer book, wondering who can hand me my answers. But mangled in a maelstrom of religions, I was left lost, searching for salvation. After years ticked by, it was only then when my Judeo-Christian boyfriend gave me a book. It didn't quite fit in with his beliefs, but he told me to give it a read. Now, I remember reading books where I'd have to tell myself to read 50 pages a day just so that I could get through it, and after reading any passage, I honestly couldn't even tell you what I had just read. <laughs> but this book, this book was like no other. It spoke to me philosophically, and it managed to show me how to live. <laughs> you didn't think that you could get so much from just one book, and it's true. Afterward, I swooped up as much reading on the subject as I could, and it still stuns me that just one book could put me on a track to how to think through life, because suddenly all my reasoning made sense. With this one book, I learned how to fit the pieces together, and suddenly my life made sense. <laughs> I didn't think that just one book could do that to a person, but I am a living testament to the message, and like I'm putting my hand on the Bible, I'll swear to this day that just the right book, in just the right hands, of just the right minds, can really give the world clarity and transfer everything perfectly. What a perfect start if I'm talking about Books Day for Book Lovers Day and I'm reading from the brand new Scars Publications, Scars.tv online, book release every event of the year, volume 2, July through December. But this is the great thing about this book is it changes topics from one to the next because on the next the events for you uh, is July 11th, which is Robert Ingersoll's birthday. So now you're going to check out your history books if you don't know who Robert Ingersoll is because this is based on him for his birthday. This poem is called Opportunity from Freedom. After fighting for freedom in this country, after fighting for freedom against slavery, the one thing I had to truly fight was the battle in my own mind. When I learned to finally think for myself, I was no longer a servant, a serf, or a slave, and that nature guided me and the world, not the ghosts of gods and myths. <laughs> Once I fi freed myself of the, fran the fantastic, this was true and real freedom. Servitude to slavery is one thing, but slavery of the mind is another. These myths are shackles and prison bars to your thoughts, forcing you to every fear, as fantastic as the fears that only the truly creative mind could even try to create. So now, free your mind, your creative mind, because the beauty is that you have the control to release your shackles. When you do, then you will know what it means to truly be free. I told you he's going to have a history lesson for you guys as well. But the interesting thing is that a couple days later on July 19th is actual, actually 
National Aviation Day. And so I wrote a haiku about it, and I started that one with the poem, the haiku, Use Your Mind. Now meant to take flight, use propellers, rudders, wings, but first, use your mind. And on that day for National Aviation Day, I thought, that's probably not enough. I'm going to have to come up with a better poem for a longer poem for this piece. So I did for National Aviation Day on August 19th. And this poem is called Just Who May Try to Stop Us. Recent plane crashes have caused many countries to ban the use of one model airplane. We had a flight planned, made sure that it wasn't canceled because of the flight's scheduled plane. I think back to 9-11, the days of silence in the skies after the grounding of all aircraft, and just how spooky it was to look up in the sky and see no contrails, hear no engine roars above. Because it doesn't matter who may try to stop us, flight is in our blood. <laughs> we may not have wings, but we always want the impossible. And since we were little, we'd get on that swing. Push me faster. Push me harder. Let's go higher. I can see across the world from here. So let's go. <laughs> As I said, they come with so many different varieties of things so quickly. I hope you are enjoying that. Um, the next ones that I want to share with you is actually, haha, -ha, this is the fun thing about choosing to write a poem every day of the year. You start looking for things for events and you find the most fascinating events happen from one day to the next. Because the next one I'd like to share with you is actually on August 21st, which is a book for poets. I have to find it. Haha. -ha. And it is for National Poets Day. Haha, <laughs> might as well since this is a poetry book. This is called Just to Craft. It can be taxing to try to wax poetic. The task is taxing and traumatic, spilling the ills of the downtrodden, relaying the pains of a nation, feeling the grievances of a people. For all self-proclaimed poets know that they have no choice but to immerse themselves, to wallow in the feelings of all, just to work, just to craft, just the right words, just so that everyone can relate to them, words that everyone can feel the emotion from, that can change how people think as a whole. This is the lifetime task they are challenged with, just to work, to slave. And in this case, slave is no understatement, because they slave just to save. They are forced in every moment to feel the full realm of everything that could happen to everyone, so at the drop of a hat they can wax poetic about the joy and the pain, because they have no choice. They slave just to save just to make people think, just to make a difference. It's a daunting task, and no serious poet takes it, no serious poet takes this task lightly. Anyone from Shakespeare to Edgar Allan Poe to Charles Bukowski understands this, because it is our choice to live and die by the written word, as it should be. For all my poet friends out there, I hope you guys appreciate that one because, as I said, this goes from one strange topic to the next, like this next poem for you, which is on August 24th. A lot of things happened on August 24th, and I'm going to share with you a number of those things, but the first poem that I wrote for, for August 24th, was, let me tell you all these details, on August 24th of 1867, that was the date when, led by Abby Hoffman, the Youth International Party disrupted the New York Stock Exchange trading by throwing dollar bills from the viewing gallery, <laughs> causing trading to cease as brokers scrambled to grab the dollar bills. Is that not amazing? Is that not a riot? I love that. 
And for that, I had to write a little piece called Value of What Money Does. In our modern day culture, money is needed to survive. I, I, I get it. But a line is crossed when the value of money with the value of money versus the value of what money does. Uh, prove me wrong. Uh, take a look at traders of the New York Stock Exchange. Go ahead, throw money down on the trading floor and see how short-sighted those money-obsessed men can really be. I, I, I get it. To deal with culture, you have to deal with money. I get it. But see how short-sighted and some of these men can be, and then check to see how happy they really can be. <laughs> I tell you, a lot of things happen on August 24th, because the next thing that I've got a poem for for August 24th is actually Pluto Planet Demotation Day. Yeah, everybody knows, and people who are older remember that Pluto was the ninth planet, and I even have a poster that I bought after it was no longer a planet. I'm like, it says Pluto's a planet. I've got to have this. What a riot. Um, so I had to have this poem in here that mentions the idea of Pluto. And I hope you enjoy it. I'll catch you off guard with this one. This is called Eleven and Two Plus Eight. Maybe I'm an observer, like an astronomer, looking out in the universe, trying to understand what makes everything, everything. Maybe I'm meant to be an astronomer, studying things colder than ice, far away. You know, Pluto is an aberrant ball of ice. I don't know, I was taught it was a planet, but then they told me that no, it's not. It's just a ball of ice from the Kuiper Belt. <laughs> but molecule by molecule, we originate from the stars. And now I know that we're all linked, our bodies formed by stardust. But outer space is a violent place. Violent explosions created the stars, and our Earth has earthquakes, earth avalanches, volcanoes, tsunamis, typhoons. And on all this madness, somehow I found you. I've survived the thunder and the lightning, the blizzards and the hurricanes and the tornadoes. I've lived through the drought. I've survived it all. I've even been dealt a near fatal blow from humanity. And with you, I have walked on the tops of glaciers, crouching down from the violent winds, looking down in the beginning of time. With you, I have watched solar storms from the geomagnetic aberrations of the aurora borealis from the Arctic Circle. And we've even viewed Venus through our telescopes and have watched you photograph Orion in the night sky. So, with these observations, I, the, wed. Because after all my searching throughout the universe, I've found what I've been looking for. Aw. <laughs> Sorry, I had to react for, that, for you on that one. But actually... Of all the things that are in here, there are so many that happen on August 24th, and I'm skipping one just to tell you that on August 24th in 79 AVD, that is the year that Mount Vesuvius, or the date that Mount Vesuvius erupted. And so I have an Instagram photo, or Instagram poem, that was about that, and I even have, and this is one of the cool things about this book, I know that radio people can't see it, but inside the book I would include an image, an Instagram image of the poem that was being displayed. Yes, that's the Colosseum in Pompeii that is in this book as well, and if you grabbed a copy of this book available through Amazon, you could also find it at scars.tv, you could see all the images in this book as well, but this short poem for August 24th, 79 AD for the day that Mount Vesuvius erupted. This poem, a short one, is called Ominous Day. As a gladiator here, I proudly drew my sword and fought. I was revered in Pompeii, winning too many battles to count. On one ominous day, when I saw Mount Vesuvius erupt, I drew my sword and charged toward that mountain. You know, 
as I said, there are so many events here that had happened at this point, but at this point I'm beginning to share with you that this is WZRD Chicago Radio 88.3 FM, The Wizard, where we are freeform. And it's been really fun sharing these poems with you because I'm going to skip some of these and I'm going to skip the 24th. And I am going to, I'm going to look for something for you guys. I am going to, ha ha, on August 26th, ha ha, this is the uh, day the 19th Amendment was certified in the United States, giving women the right to vote. As I told you, there are so many different themes that you go on for this, so I hope you enjoy this one, and it is called Keep Looking Happy. Women, in theory, should feel pleased when we win battles for our rights. So whatever women do, keep looking happy. <laughs> That's what we women have to do in this eternal uphill battle. When this country was founded, it was land-owning white men who voted. Fifty years before we women gained that right, white men decided that black men, men once slaves or descendants of slaves, black men once considered three-fifths of a person, they got the right to vote 50 years before us women. I get it. I get it. I, I shouldn't be so pessimistic. I shouldn't look so negatively at battles that we've had to fight so hard to win. I shouldn't think that our only male option to vote for, I mean, they decide our fate that make us, make personal choices for us women that, you know, we have the honor to vote for. And I understand. We've come a long way, baby. Uh, we women once couldn't even attend college, even if we had such a long history of caring for your homes or your food or your children, understanding finances so much more explicitly than you. And yes, us women are running for office while we still are so underrepresented, underrepresented. And we still face that uphill battle. So, yes, we'll keep voting. Thank you for that honor. Because before you know it, we'll have made some changes that you didn't even see coming. Because, really, when we're done, you'll see that laws that the rest of the world agrees with, laws about treating women as equals, that kind of treatment, isn't so unreasonable after all. I know, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's been fascinating reading poems for you. And I, as I said, a lot of things happened in August because on August 28th, I'm going to pull out a paper because so many things happened that I had to write one poem for. On August 28th, in 1955, the black teenager Emmett Till was brutally murdered in a lynching, galvanizing the civil rights movement. In 1957, on August 28th, U.S. Senator Strom Thurmond filibustered to prevent the voting on the Civil Rights Act of 1957. And you know what else? In 1963, on August 28th, the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom happened, and Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. then read his I Have a Dream speech. All of these things happened on the same day, August 28th, in different years. So, try to come up with one short piece to cover all of that. Huh, that one's a fun job, but this poem is that for you guys. I hope you enjoy it. It is called Effigy. When it gets hot like this, when the summer drags on, then is when you wonder when heat and pain will end. It's as if a fire has been set to the entire land, and this fire is within the hearts of men who are still set out to do you in. Low winds come across the plains, rustling leaves and anything hanging from the trees. And after this heat that you've suffered through for far too long, all you can see are your brothers hanging from those trees in effigy. 
Then, when we fight, we even use your rules, and still you will do everything in your power to stop us from having the rights we have always deserved. It may take years for us to come together and truly try to make real change, but even when we agree that we should all be free, <laughs> the blockades that we think are forever down will still remain. We want to be free, and we will always fight but we will always feel the flames on our backs as we face the wind. How can, it's a difficult thing to try to put that much stuff into such a short piece, I suppose. Um, but as I said, I'm gonna keep going with this. On August 31st, two different things happened on August 31st. Um, in 1888, Marianne Burton was murdered, and that was the first known murder by Jack the Ripper. That was a long time ago, but that also happens to be the day that Princess Diana was chased away down by paparazzi and died in a car crash. That was in 1997. 1987. 1997. Anywho. <laughs> um, those two things happened on the same day, on August 31st, and for that, I've got a poem for you guys. I hope you enjoy it and try to figure out how to put those two things into a poem. This poem is called, Everyone is to Blame. We struggle for our lives at our own peril. Women in history have had a hard history. Those who have fought hard to make it on their own, the only way they knew how, sometimes had to worry until their safety was in peril. What? For walking down the street? What? For trying to trust a strange man? But it does not matter if any of those women, how any of these women are killed by murderers or by paparazzi. For rich or poor, famous or hated, we all have to watch our backs. For this violence, everyone is to blame. I know, what am I doing to you guys? I think I'm going to have to go to the next page from August 31st to December 1st. I figured I was gonna cover the summer stuff for you guys in here. Not everything is being read for the summer pieces. I'm just giving you highlights of just in the beginning. I hope you enjoy it, but on um, September 1st, it's actually when the Pioneer spacecraft visited Saturn back in 1979. And in honor of that, we've got this poem for you guys and covers a lot of things, including Saturn. This is called Beauty in the Eyes of Einstein. I heard NASA scientists say that Einstein dismissed some of his theories, even some theories we may know all too well. But Einstein didn't like some of his theories because he thought they weren't beautiful. And I wonder, what is beauty? Is it the geomagnetic aberrations of the aurora borealis dancing along the high horizon at the Arctic Circle? <laughs> Is it the way you look at me with those gorgeous doe eyes after we've been apart so long? Is it the scattered collisions from Comet shoemaker Levy 9 into the planet Jupiter? <laughs> Is it what I feel when your arms are finally around me and I don't want to open my eyes and I never want to let go? Is it the eternally changing whips, wisps of volcanic trails in the Saturn moon Titan's atmosphere? Is it the way that listening to the music you make can fill me with such energy? <laughs> or is it converting matter into pure energy with just the right formula? Einstein <laughs> believed the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is a source of all art and science. So am I driven to look up at the stars in the night sky to see the stars from billions of years ago to fall in love every night? Einstein reminds us, we are all ruled in what we do by impulses. So is it how on impulse I move a bit closer to you so I can feel the heat from your body so close to mine? We ask, what is beauty? And they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So 
it makes me wonder. <laughs> oh, I'm skipping. You Believe it or not, I am skipping poems here for you. I hope you are enjoying these. And there are plenty more poems because there are a lot of things that happen in all of these crazy events throughout the calendar year, which was fun to share in this book, Every Event of the Year, Volume 2, July through December, now available through Amazon. You can also find it through scars at scars.tv online. But I will read just a few more poems for you guys. I think, aha, we just went from Einstein to talking about the fact I've got No One Will, Forf uh, will Forget is the poem. Uh, Anne Frank, this is the day on September 3rd that she was taken to by train to what would eventually be her death after all of the work that she had gone through, through with her family to be saved. This is a short piece in light of that day on September 3rd. This is called No One Will Forget. I didn't know any better. I was just doing what everyone told me to do. I didn't know that people were taking me away. I didn't know I'd have to hide to survive. I know I played hide and seek games. Now I must hide for my life. Now all I can do is sit here, write, to remember, so that no one will forget. I totally have and i've skipped a bunch of pages to go to that but there's just a wide variety of poems in this collection i hope you're enjoying it i have maybe i've got three more poems for you guys in this episode but this next one i'm going to share with you is on haha -ha, september 4th which is national wildlife day <laughs> as i tell you it changes from one topic to the next so dramatically this is called one with wildlife stopping my car rolling down the windows the large bison seem to just stand there, though that might be just my imagination because the only photo I could snap looks like the bison may be actually trying to walk away. Pulled my car over. There was snow everywhere all along the snowy Wyoming roads. I wonder if the snow silenced my Saturn while I pulled there, slowly opened my door, slid out of my seat, and stood there to see a gold fox at the road's edge. This wildlife was too amazing for the city girl, but I took one step and the golden ears on that fox perked up before the fox darted away in the snow. <laughs> the only way we could see a humpback whale in their actual natural habitat was to sail near them. But in the Southern Ocean, the animals haven't learned to fear us or fear our technology. So the key may be to try to get us close to their element and play in their water. Play in the water with the sea lions in the Pacific or swim down to where the napping sharks are at the bottom. Walk to the grounds of the Nazca birds, but, but don't get too close. Or, simply enough, drive out to the middle of nowhere lay down in the grass. Don't wait, just relax, fall asleep under the stars, and before you know it, a deer will come here near. But don't lift your head, don't try to commune, you'll scare the deer away. Because even though they, because actually they really know you're not really one with wildlife. So just let them be. Enjoy this fleeting moment of connection and realize how sacred the wild can really be. I hope everybody's enjoying this crazy wild variety that I've got for you guys because the next poem, and I had to do something that was family related for you guys, is for National Grandparents Day, which is on the first Sunday after Labor Day every year. And uh, there are a few for Grandparents Day I've got in this book for you, but I'm going to share this one that is called Visiting and Seeing the Signs. My grandfather was moving, my grandmother was moving away. I was out of town so I could only call. And when I got on the phone I told her that I could be visiting where she was moving to so I could see her in maybe six months. We didn't talk much as I got older so right about when we were going to get off the phone, she said, 
I love you. And I said, I love you too. I never get this way. But after I hung up the phone, I cried. After that, for three days when I would walk down the street or look out every window, I would see clouds of black birds and feathers in my darkened skies. Every time I walked outside, a, a biblical apocalypse swarmed over me, and for the life of me, I could not understand why. After three days, I went back to visit my siblings, visiting, living only two hours, a two-hour drive away, before I took a flight to see my parents. And when I walked through that door to see my sister, my father was there. I walked down the marble-tiled floor to meet him and hug, and when we embraced, I said, Grandma's dead. Because the heavens were giving me the signs for days while she was fighting for her doctors to check her again. And because they wouldn't listen to an old white woman, her symptoms were never treated and she died before I even came back. I know that I cried for her days ago, but I will cry for her again and again. And now I will never question when I am shown the signs again. <laughs> okay, there are a bunch of different pieces about Grandparents' Day, and I'm I'm tucking away. I'm going to pass the thing about 9/11. There are lots of pieces here, so I'm going to end with one. I'm going to go all the way to September 17th, be the last one for showing you for summer pieces in this book, Every Event of the Year, Volume Two, July through December. Um, yeah, the 17th of September is actually Constitution Day. So, for all my Chicago buds, and some who may know this, this, is a 2016 edit of the poem, The State of the Nation. My phone rang earlier today, and I picked it up and I said, Hello? And the man at the other end said, Is this Janet Kuypers? And I said, Yes, it is. May I ask who's calling? And he said, Yeah, hi, it's just me, George Washington, and I'm sitting here with Jefferson and a couple other of us guys here, and we just wanted to tell you a few things. And I said, oh, why me? And he said, excuse me, I believe I said I was the one that wanted to do the talking. God, that is a problem with Americans nowadays. They are so damn rude. And I said, you know, you really didn't have to use language like that. And he said, oh, I'm sorry. It's just that I've been dead for so long. I lose all control of my manners. Well, anyway, as I was saying, we just wanted to tell you a few things. I mean, like... We didn't have much of an idea of what we were doing when we were starting this country here. You know, we didn't have much experience in creating bodies of power. So I could understand how our constitution could be misconstrued. And then he put in a dramatic pause and he said, but when he said that people had a right to bear arms, we meant to protect themselves from a government gone wrong, and not so that you could kill a 16-year-old girl at an ATM at 6 p.m. for $20 cash. And when we said freedom of speech, we included the idea of the separation of church and state, because freedom of religion could mean freedom from religion. And when we said freedom of speech, we had no idea you'd be burning the flag, or painting pictures of Christ doused in urine, or photographing people with whips up their respective anatomies. But hell, I guess we've got to grin and bear it, because if we ban that, the next thing they'll ban is books. And we can't have that. And I said, but you know there are schools that have books banned, George. And he said, oh. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hope you've enjoyed this reading from this brand new book from Scars Publications, Every Event of the Year, Volume 2, July through December. You can find it at Amazon or you can find it at scars.tv online or through janetkuypers.com if you're interested as well. As I said, this is WZRD Chicago 88.3 FM, The Wizard, where we are free freeform. And I have to tell you, it's been a pleasure sharing this poetry with you guys. I hope everyone remains safe. I hope everyone remains stable and secure and know that you guys are all loved. Thank you all. Thank you very much.